So, say you're Sega and you've decided you want to save Sonic the Hedgehog. How do you do that exactly? I mean, hell, where do you start? As good a place as any would be to determine just in what form you want him to continue on. Generally, I'd say there's two main paths to take when trying to bring a Golden Age franchise into the modern era. To save time, we'll call them the Mario Path and the Mega Man Path. If you take the Mega Man path, well, it's not all that hard to do. It simply means accepting as a given that your franchise's appeal is tied inseparably to its original gameplay mechanic, and responding by keeping said mechanic more or less constant as you make minor cosmetic tweaks per installment, save for the occasional digression and or Pokemon ripoff. So, you want to go that path? Super! Hire a bunch of fresh-faced game design grads who grew up on the Genesis and put them to work cranking out retrofile Sonic side-scrollers for the portables and downloads. Only downside to that, it's a limited market with little room for long-term growth. If you want growth, you need the Mario Path. And that one's much more difficult, because it means breaking down an entire franchise into its component parts and overall philosophy, and figuring out how to work all those tropes and traditions into an entirely new form. It can be a lengthy process, toward which I humbly offer the following organized suggestions and or steps. Step 1. Relearn Level Design some folks will tell you that one cannot be taught good level design. I disagree. You want to know all there is about what it takes to make a good level? Here's your master class. Here's your how to do that but in 3D master class. And here's your big book of don'ts. Concentrate, grasshopper. Step 2. Find a new purpose for speed. Mario jumps high and gets powers from plants and wacky costumes. Link has a sword. Kirby eats dudes and takes their abilities. Samus and Mega Man have upgradable guns for their hands. Lara Croft looks like she could suck a golf ball through a garden hose. Game heroes are largely defined by their special skills, and Sonic's is the ability to run really, really, really fucking fast. Which is great for getting from point A to point B, but not so great for exploration, combat, puzzle solving, and the other hallmarks of 3D platforming. But without his speed, Sonic is just Felix the Cat on methamphetamine. It's his thing so you need to use it. And since speed in and of itself is no longer impressive, the key is to use it creatively. To start with, I say go back and refine the hell out of the mechanics from the adventure cycle. Let him build up super speed by running a certain distance while holding a button. Also build in an instant super speed dash move as a secondary option, limited by a gauge of some kind that keeps the usage down and can be replenished by, I don't know, the rings would work, I guess. Furthermore, weaponize the super speed state in and of itself as one of his primary attacks, used for demolishing certain obstacles or delivering the death blow to certain enemies. What I've just described is A, all stuff that's either been used or partially used throughout the history of Sonic, just refined and collected, and B, would require in total, factoring in the necessary ability to jump, approximately two buttons and a directional control. In other words, simple enough to map to a fucking NES controller. It's a platformer about a fuzzy blue hedgehog, people. Simplicity is your friend. But from that simplicity, I calculate you can get the foundations of a widely varied action game. For example, say you're fighting a big boss in a wide open plane. You can dash attack him to death, providing you've got a full enough speed gauge, or you can run away and then back again to build up super speed for the same effect. Fun, varied, player gets to make some decisions. Later on, maybe a similar fight, but in an enclosed space, preventing built up speed, meaning you've got to time and economize your limited dash attack. Not just a brawl, strategy now. Some levels could be the same way. Gotta break the walls, not enough room to run around and charge up, gotta dash sparingly, find more rings, a puzzle, Marble Zone, 2009. And I bet there can be more where that came from. Maybe bring back the magic shoes power-up. Now they make it take less time to build up speed. And hey, since we all know Sonic drowns so easy, bring in and codify the sometimes used idea that at top speed he can run on the surface of water. You could get whole levels out of that. Sonic has to cross some big expanse of water, gotta keep his ass moving at full throttle, tough to do with all those enemies attacking. I think I want to play that. How about you? I'm just spitballing here, guys. One more. Maybe you could do that thing from the one or certain flash-heavy episodes of Justice League where a guy is going so fast everything around him seems to slow down. A kind of sonic hyper mode. You could whack a guy five times before he finishes a single punch. Just a thought. Basically, I'm talking about a slight but important philosophical shift. It's not a game that's fast. It's a game about a guy who's fast. Step three. Kill the... Cast. I said it last time, I'll say it again. Sonic's friends suck. 
damn near all of them. You want to get serious about saving this franchise? It's time to thin the fucking herd. You need the hero. You need the sidekick. You need the ambiguous Han Solo-esque anti-hero. You need the bad guy. I guess you need Amy, too. Everyone else, sayonara. No more shadow, no more big, no more fucking robot, no more bat, no more cat. Definitely lose the fucking rabbits. Gone. Done. Over. Never coming back. In fact, let's make that the beginning of the game. Eggman's not playing around anymore. He shows up and fucking murders everyone. That's Sonic's new motivation. Revenge. See? Now he's more badass. The bad guys are more hateable, and the player never has to hear from Cream the Rabbit again. Which brings me to... Step 4. Story. A.K.A. Watch All of This. Hold on, calm down. I'm not suggesting that Sega scrap their whole Sonic universe in favor of canonizing the so-called Sadam continuity. I mean, yeah, certain fans would go nuts and you'd probably have a massive, massive hit, but it's still unrealistic and I'm not sure it's a great idea to begin with. But I will say that Sad Am is still the only time I've ever given a shit about the narrative of anything Sonic-related, so there's probably lots of basic how-to-make-the-audience-care lesson to be gleaned from it. Plus, it's a good how-to on making Eggman work as a genuinely threatening supervillain. Speaking of which, Step 5. Let the American and European localizations call him Robotnik again. This is more of a personal gripe, but yeah. It's just a better bad guy name over on this side of the pond, okay? Keep the characterization consistent, but the name has got to go. It's just not working for us. Step 6. Characterization. Fundamentals time, people. Just who the fuck is Sonic the Hedgehog? Willing hero, unwitting anti-hero, rebel, loner, white knight, rogue. Why are we rooting for him? Why is he fighting? Who are his friends? Why are they his friends? Who are his enemies? Why are they his enemies? These are things you need to answer, and if you answer them correctly, a basic story can take shape. And since Sonic's current continuity is, well, shit, let me take a quick shot at, in the context that presumes a complete reboot, reworking this. So, you'd have to start with Sonic. Loner keeps to himself, doesn't get involved, doesn't have to, always been able to literally run away from anything, always has. Maybe he finds himself someplace new, or maybe it's not new, hint hint at deeper backstory, that's having problems, like from an evil villain, perhaps. Maybe in a moment of uncharacteristic selflessness, or maybe it's not uncharacteristic, hint 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 at deeper backstory, he saves one of the locals from baddies, a cute little kid who will now idolize him, or a girl who will be smitten with him or both. Let's say he gets himself fucked up a bit during this rescue, so the kids and the girl take him to their village, city, camp, whatever. Oh, and it's all animals again, like in the Genesis era. No more developed cities, no more humans. It's incongruous and sloppy looking, Sonic looks stupid hanging around with normal humans, and even stupider trying to fuck one of them. Ahem. Good guys are animals, bad guy is humanoid, much cleaner and more streamlined. Anyway, these people are hurting. Bad guy is oppressing them, but now there's this Sonic guy. He has superpowers. He can defeat the enemies. He's a hero, but he doesn't want to be. Not his scene. Loner. He has no stake here. He doesn't even know this Robotnik guy. Or does he? Hint, hint. You get the idea. But they need his help. Could it be? Maybe there's heroism in it after all? That little kid sure thinks so. So does the girl. Ooh. But there's second act conflict. Maybe these poor people already had a guy who was supposed to be their champion. Maybe... This guy! Yeah, he's supposed to be their big kahuna, the guy who guards uh, the Chaos Emeralds. But he can't fuck up Robotnik's goons like Sonic can. I bet he resents the hell out of that. I bet he doesn't trust this new Sonic guy. I bet they get into lots of manly, turf war, dick-measuring macho bullshit about it. And the bad guy? Shit, I don't know, he, he seems to have a thing about technology, right? He's probably a scientist of some kind, picks on animals mostly. Maybe he's doing uncool science stuff to animals. Maybe stuff that might have at one point, I don't know, turned a hedgehog blue, made him able to run at supersonic speed. Maybe a hedgehog who, if he was younger and not unnaturally blue, might look an awful lot like some misunderstood and or bullied kid hedgehog who ran away from this very village years ago and was never seen again. Huh. I wonder... All right, all right, all right, fine. Nobody's going to give me a Hugo Award for that. It's fairly standard stuff, drawn from recurring genre archetypes, bits and pieces of Sonic's various permutations. But I'll toot my own horn and say I don't think it's half bad for something I pulled out of my ass at 3 a.m. I'm mainly just demonstrating that you don't need to jump through overcomplicated hoops to squeeze a decent story out of the Sonic franchise. There's plenty to work with it right there. So anyway, if I was in charge at Sega and I wanted to save Sonic the Hedgehog, those are the stakes I'd take. 
Sonic the Hedgehog used to be Sonic the Man, and he can be again. And I don't think what I just outlined is the only way or even the best way, but I think it's a way. So Sega, if you're listening at all, go ahead, use some of this, even if it just gets you guys rethinking the franchise. Heck, I'm sure plenty of your fans will be down in the comments section with even more thoughts to offer. You guys obviously want to keep making Sonic games. Wouldn't you like them to be good while you're at it? So, thus ends my two-part Sonic episode. Hopefully, all you Sonic fans stayed through to the end, and even more, hopefully, you don't all hate me for recommending the total genocide of the supporting cast. Anyway, next time, I'll be talking about whatever the fuck I feel like talking about. So there. Uh, but probably race. Part the second. Because guess what's finally out now?